Praise the Lamb of God, beloved. This is Dr. Lyle Lee coming to you again to explain one more time about how to read a Bible in seven ways. Today I want to deal with the topic of secrets. The Bible has many secrets found within it. One particular portion of Scripture that I have come to love is Psalms 25, verse 14. The Word of God says here, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him, and He will show them His covenant. Now, there are many secrets in the Bible that God will show to Christians that fear Him. In other words, this is a conditional promise. All Christians will not find out secrets. Doesn't matter if you're a bishop. Doesn't matter if you're pastoring a church of 7,000. There's no difference to God if you're just born again or you've been a Christian for 25 years. If you are fearing the Lord, if you fear the Lord, then you qualify to find out secrets. But again, understand what the fear of the Lord is. It means to love God. And to love God, you cannot use your lips to say, I love you, Lord. Jesus said the condition, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you keep his commandments, you're fearing God. And if you fear God, You've met a condition for God to reveal secrets to you. And He will reveal secrets to you as you seek Him because you fear Him. And then the Word says here, He will also show you His covenant. Now, the New Testament in and of itself appears to be a secret to many churches. Many churches do not understand the New Testament and cannot preach the New Testament. The condition here in fearing God, in other words, keeping His commandments, guarantees the fact that God will reveal the covenant to you. So in our dispensation, we talk about the new covenant. The New Testament is filled with many commandments. 1,200 commandments are written in the New Testament, not just the Ten Commandments, which Christ has amplified. Unless perhaps you think that wives should obey their husbands is a suggestion, or that we should turn the other cheek. Maybe you think that's another suggestion, or go the extra mile. And perhaps you think when Christ said, give to everyone that asks, that was just a suggestion. And never swear by your head, you're never to promise anybody anything just to say yes or no. So, as we study the New Testament, there's about 1,200 commandments in about 17 different categories. In other words, if you decide to get married, you get more commandments. Commandments for wives and commandments for husbands. If you have children, then you have more commandments. If you go into ministry as a bishop, 1 Timothy 3, you get commandments. And also, a deacon gets more commandments. Also, their wives and children. If you're, if you're um, divorced, you get commandments. If you're a widow, you get commandments. If you're a virgin, you have commandments. If you're a business owner, there are commandments for you. Or if you're an employee, there are commandments. As I said, there's about 17 different categories of these 1,200 commandments plus the Ten Commandments. Most churches know nothing of that today. They don't preach it. They don't teach it because it seems to be a secret to them as though the covenant is not revealed to them. Most churches and most denominations and most preachers around the world don't know that the whole New Testament is made up of six covenants. Adam's covenant, Noah's covenant, Abraham's covenant, 
the Mosaic law or the Old Testament was destroyed by Christ, Ephesians 2, 14 to 16. But that was the fourth covenant. And then we have the Ten Commandments, which the Apostle Paul says was a covenant also. That's found in two places in the Bible. Romans 9, verse 4, and Hebrews 9, verse 4, says the Ten Commandments was a covenant. And then you have the Davidical covenant, the sixth covenant of the Bible. And finally, the New Testament, which is a compilation of six covenants. These covenants all come together. So, what we want to understand is that this is a secret. Most people, they think they can preach the New Testament and they only preach portions, small bits, little information. Perhaps people do not preach the 225 conditional promises that Christ taught in the four Gospels. So in the four Gospels, you will find 225 conditional promises. Most people don't know what a conditional promise is. Well, an example. In the Gospels, Jesus taught, let's take John chapter 6, and Jesus taught, if you want eternal life, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. Verse 53 to 58. Now, that's a conditional promise to get eternal life. Eat my flesh, drink my blood, and that does not mean have communion. Communion does not give anybody eternal life. That is a metaphorical saying, and it must be understood because it's a metaphor. It must be understood in that spiritual context. And so, because Christ is the Word of God, the only way to eat His flesh is to eat the Word, and the only way to eat the Word is to obey the Word. Obedience to the Word is how you eat the Word. An example, if you read, love your enemy, and yet you do not give them food or drink, and you do not love them, you're not eating the Word. If you're not eating the Word, you're not eating His flesh. How are you going to get eternal life? So you see, beloved, there are many conditional promises all throughout the Word of God. Now, of course, this particular eternal life I referred to, it's conditional based upon keeping commandments and doctrines. And therefore, we are not talking about the salvation of the spirit, but the salvation of the soul and body. The spirit is saved by grace through faith without works. But when it comes to the soul and body, I love what James says in chapter 1, verse number 21. If you're going to get your soul saved, the only way to get your soul saved as a Christian is by obeying the Word of God. The engrafted Word of God, which is the Ten Commandments in the Spirit, written in your heart. The Ten Commandments that Christ amplified, not what was given to the Jewish nation Israel, but the Ten Commandments that Christ magnified, is written in your heart. And so if you obey the Word of God, keep the commandments and the doctrines, it will save your soul. That's how you eat His flesh and drink His blood. And also through suffering, cross-bearing, Calvary. But let me go on to state, the New Testament seems to be a secret to many people, but it's only one of multitudes of secrets in the Bible. There are many, many secrets in the Word of God. Now, in the New Testament, in and of itself, it teaches not only conditional promises, it teaches unconditional promises. And most people don't know that Christ, Christ, in His parables, always taught that Christians backslide and remain Christians. An example. In Luke chapter 15, He taught three parables, and in each parable, the Christian that backslid remained a Christian while it was backslidden. The sheep that went astray was still a sheep. It did not turn into a goat. When the shepherd caught up to it, it was still a sheep. The coin remained a coin, lost in the house of God, which is a metaphor for the church. There are many Christians going to church and they're lost right in the house of God. And then the third parable was the parable of the son 
down in the pig pen, but still called a son. So the Christian remains a Christian. Although he's backslidden, Christ believes that, I believe that. They do not cease to being saved. They do not lose their salvation. Salvation is eternal. It is not temporal. Nobody gets born again to receive temporary life, and then when they backslide, they've lost it. That does not happen to any Christian. Everybody receives eternal life, which not only covers the life that we're in today, but life after death. We are talking about eternity, beloved. But in the Gospels, those Christians that backslid, gain the whole world, they'll lose their soul. You won't make it into the kingdom of heaven unless you repent. As long as you've got breath, then there's hope for you. You can repent. Today's the day of salvation. There's hope for you. But if you die in your sin, you won't make it into the kingdom of heaven. That's the secret. Do you want to understand how the secret unfolds? Let me show you. Revelation 22. I'm reading from Revelation 22, verse 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life that's in the Garden of Eden, which is in the city, New Jerusalem, which is the kingdom of heaven. And may enter in through the gates into the city. And then it says in verse 15, For without are dogs. Now that's a metaphorical name for being unsaved. Listen to the secret. Outside the kingdom, new city, Jerusalem, are dogs. Not only that, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and people that just love to make a lie. Liars are also outside the kingdom of heaven. This is what Paul taught literally in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, Galatians 5, 19 to 21, and Ephesians 5, 3 to 5. Those that are in the kingdom of heaven today through being born again through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ are not guaranteed to get into the millennial kingdom of heaven for 1,000 years to rule as a king and priest and furthermore, they are not guaranteed to make it into the final kingdom of heaven after the white throne judgment when we start a new heaven and new earth. Because when that city, New Jerusalem, comes down, beloved, after the white throne judgment, when Lucifer and one-third of the angels are judged and thrown into the lake of fire, when all of the children of the devil that did not have their names in the Lamb's book of life, are judged and thrown into the lake of fire. When hell itself is gone to the lake of fire, we're going to start a new heaven and new earth. And this Bible says in closing, on the earth, outside the kingdom of heaven, are all these people. They never went to the lake of fire. They're on the earth. It's a secret. Who are they? It's a secret. Where did they come from? It's a secret. In your denomination, perhaps, you can't explain it because your denomination puts backslidden Christians in hell. But you must realize these people are on the earth. They're not in the lake of fire. These people are on the earth. The first metaphorical name here is the word dog. You see, please understand in 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, 2 Peter 2, verse 22. 2 Peter 2. Let me turn there and I'll read it instead of quoting it. From 2 Peter chapter 2, Peter gives us the metaphorical name for Christians that backslide. Strangely enough, they are not called goats because a goat ends up in hell, and from hell to a lake of fire. Strangely enough, Christians that backslide, according to 2 Peter chapter 2, in verse 22, it says, But it is happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned 
to his own vomit again. He calls Christians that are backslidden dogs. He does not call them goats. See, when you read what Jesus said in Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46, he taught the sheep and the goats. The goats end up in the lake of fire. And the sheep go into the kingdom of heaven. But he never taught what happens to all those Christians that were in jail, in prison, without clothes, hungry, sick, naked. He never taught what happened to them. Those are all the backslidden Christians. Peter says they're dogs. Revelation says they're outside the kingdom. That's the secret. The first thing you realize, they didn't go to the lake of fire. They didn't make it into the kingdom. They've lost their inheritance. How sad that many Christians, because they refuse to keep the commandments, they refuse to serve the Lord, they refuse to fear God, did not make it into the kingdom of heaven, but were left outside the kingdom of heaven for all eternity as a dog. Meaning, your body is not glorified. You did not get resurrected with a glorified body. You say, preacher, how do you know that? Because in Revelation 22, it says, those outside the kingdom will need the leaves from the tree of life for the healing of nations for all eternity. They'll need the leaves from the tree of life for the healing of nations. That tells me their body isn't glorified. When you get a glorified body, you don't need to be healed. And the reason why they're called dogs is because their body's not glorified. Beloved, you think about that. Because if you're a liar, you won't make it into the kingdom. You're thinking perhaps sin is only the rapist, the murderer, the homosexual. As Paul says, no homosexual, no lesbian will make it into the kingdom of heaven. I don't care if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going in. Unless you are repenting, unless you've already repented of your sin, unless you're living a life of repentance, you won't make it in. Today is a day of salvation. There are many secrets to the Word of God, but they're only revealed to those that fear God. These are only a few that I've touched on today. If you want to learn more about the secrets of the Bible, Go to my publisher, wordclay.com. You'll find them on the internet, wordclay.com. And when you go there, punch in my name, Dr. Lyle Lee, and you will see 20 books that I've published, or more than 20. And one book there is called How to Read a Bible. And you can study how to read a Bible in secrets, because I put many more secrets in that book how to read a Bible in secrets, and you'll be able to understand things that are not taught in your churches. They're not taught by other preachers. They are secrets that God has revealed to me and that I'm sharing with the body of Christ as God opens doors. May the Lord God bless you and increase your faith. Remember, the commandment says to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to know how to divide the Bible, beloved. Divide it into its unconditional promises, conditional promises, commandments, and doctrine. More than 200 doctrine are taught in has given them unconditional blessings. And they cannot curse them or add to them. They can't subtract from them, and they can't add to them. So whether you serve the devil or whether you serve the Lord is irrelevant when you're dealing with unconditional promises. Now on the day that you got saved, Christ caused you to be born again. That's an unconditional promise, meaning your spirit is now resurrected recreated. It's taken by the Holy Ghost and it's recreated or resurrected. Your spirit is no longer mortal. It is immortal. It's already glorified. You're changed from death 
unto eternal life. And Christ regenerated your spirit, Titus 3, 5, meaning He caused your spirit to be recreated, or as I've already said, resurrected. You're also adopted on the day that you got saved. Ephesians 1, 5, you're adopted. You're predestinated. All right, Romans 8, verse 29 to 30. Predestination gives you a future look at your destiny, which is to be glorified, to have a glorified body like the Lord Jesus. And that's the image Paul talks about in Romans 8, verse 29 and 30. It's about the glorification of our human body. That's the future look of our destiny, predestination. Then we also know that we are also sanctified by the Word of God on the day that we got saved and we were made righteous. 1 Corinthians 1.30 These two things were done to us. Now in Hebrews 3 verse 1, the Bible says we were made holy. And so these things were given to you. You're redeemed, you're regenerated, you're adopted, you're righteous, you're holy, you're sanctified, you're also justified, Romans 4.25. All these things are unconditional promises. Then you have, as I've already stated, 225 conditional promises that Christ taught and another 100 or 200 the apostles taught in their epistles. But many people don't preach that today. As though the gospel is a secret to many. They don't seem to understand the gospel because there's a condition to understanding the New Testament covenant. You must fear the Lord. Now, let's look at many other secrets of the Bible because the Bible is filled with secrets, beloved. Many people don't realize there are 19 curses in Genesis chapter 3. God cursed 19 times. Now, He cursed Satan with seven curses. He cursed Eve with five curses, and He cursed Adam with seven curses. The seven curses given to the devil or the serpent, meaning Lucifer, refers to metaphorical curses. The five curses given to Eve, on the other hand, were all literal. They're not spiritual curses, they're literal. But the seven curses given to Adam were spiritual. They're all metaphorical. And then God took the seven curses of Adam, He also gave them to the woman, so she ended up with twelve curses. And man, Adam, male, in gender, has seven. So a woman is cursed above a man, which seems to be a secret to many people, and probably why they're called the weaker vessel. They suffer more than a man. But if you study those 19 curses, you have to read it metaphorically for Satan and Adam, but for Eve, you read it literally. So let's briefly take a look at it. The seven curses of the serpent, well, when you study... Upon your belly you will go. That's curse number three. The third curse. Upon your belly you will go. That word belly means spirit. Jesus said in John 7, verse 37 and 39, Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. He means when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost flows from your innermost being, your new man, the one that's born again. The Holy Spirit gets filled with the anointing. And then the anointing flows from your spirit man. That's your heart. So this is called your belly. So when the serpent, which is a metaphorical name for Satan, when he was cursed to crawl on his belly, it means he died. God killed him. He lost his angelic body. And he became a spirit form. Today, the devil does not have an a angelic body. He travels in a spirit form and he seeks embodiment. This is a great secret to many people. I want you to realize as you study those seven curses, it tells us about our enemy. Curse number four says, Dust shall you eat all the days of your life. This is a great secret. Do you not realize that no physical serpent eats dust. They all live on rodents 
They live on birds. They actually eat other snakes. They're carnivorous. So snakes do not eat dust, but yet the curse, number four, curse, was that they would eat dust all the days of their life. Now I want you to realize you were made out of the dust on the sixth day. You are the food that every demon has been cursed to eat. They feed off of your murmuring, your complaining, your lust, your desires that are filled with iniquity and sin. They feed off your depression. They get happy. They feed off your sorrow. They get joyful when you get sorrowful. It's food for them. Your hatred, your adultery, your drugs, your drunkenness, homosexuality, it's all food for the devil. You're just feeding demons. You're nothing more than food for the devil. They are cursed to feed on mankind. And I want you to realize that this is a great secret to many people. But Peter tried to reveal it to us when he said, The devil goes around as a roaring lion seeking whom he will devour. In other words, we are food for the devil. Now, I want you to understand, beloved, those are metaphorical curses that you will read there concerning Satan. Eve's are literal, but Adam's are also metaphorical. There's only one curse, the last one, number seven, that God gave to Adam, which says he'll return back to the dust, and that's literal. Physical human beings do go back to dust after about 20 years or 120 years, every bone becomes dust. And so, we realize that there are many secrets in the Word of God that people cannot preach. They do not teach. And you will probably never hear many of the things that I'll talk about. It's a secret. An example. When you study the Gospel of Jesus Christ... And the Bible said here, and I read this to you in Psalms 25, verse 14. If you fear God, God will show you His covenant and He'll reveal secrets to you. When you study the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's interesting to note that all Christians that backslide are never threatened with hell. That is not even an option in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul always taught in Ephesians 5, verses 3 to 5, and Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 to 10. He always taught Christians, if you commit these 17 sins, then you will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. He never said you'll go to hell. He said you won't make it into the kingdom of heaven. Many people don't understand that. It's a secret to them. What is he talking about making it into the kingdom of heaven? First of all, you must understand that the kingdom of heaven is different than heaven. They're two different places, two different things. Christians that die and go to heaven do not necessarily get into the kingdom of heaven. Many Christians have cursed their own blessing and their own inheritance what they should have inherited was the kingdom of heaven. And many Christians will never enter. This is a great secret. This is not taught in the church of Jesus Christ today. Christians that backslide, they put them in hell, or some denominations will say, well, they were never born again to start with. And yet Christ in the New Testament if your church only teaches 20, or like most churches, 20 to 30 doctrine, get a hold of this book, Doctrines of the New Testament. It's about 700 pages, and it will bless you. God's grace be with you. The Lord increase you in faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen.